All right, well, thank you, Dr. Morgan, for the introduction. Um, like she said, I'm in College Station, Texas, so I was in charge of a lot of the south and southeastern sites uh, that we sampled. And I'm gonna be talking about aggregate stability as an indicator for soil health. And specifically, I'm gonna talk about the different methods that we used to measure aggregate stability. So why did we choose aggregate stability? Well, it basically describes the ability of those structural units to maintain their structural integrity and withstand those external wind and water forces. And it's a great indicator because it's related to a lot of biological, chemical, and physical soil properties. Uh, for instance, it's related to things like surface crusting and water and air movement throughout the soil. And those are very important for the functionality and the health of the soil. Also, it's one of our indicators that's really sensitive to changes in management. In particular, we found that it's very sensitive to changes in tillage. And it's a very tangible indicator. So it's a great tool to use on farms and on demonstrations. I'm sure a lot of us have seen this demonstration. Uh, you can find this on the NRCS's website. You usually take two aggregates, one from maybe a conventionally tilled field or one with low organic matter, and you take another one that has either high organic matter or maybe one that's in a less tilled system. And you put these in water and you watch how they break up when they put, they're put in water. And you can see on this one that the one that has less organic matter, a higher tillage intensity, it breaks up more. So its aggregate stability is lower. And you know that's great to have something that we can see and feel uh, when we're talking about aggregate or when we're talking about soil health and indicators but we're really concerned about quantifying that aggregate stability. You know, our job here is to look at some way we can universally measure soil health. So we have to be able to quantify that indicator so we can tell our farmers, yes, your soil health is increasing by this much. So in this, this project, we had four methods that we used to analyze aggregate stability. The first was the Cornell Rainfall Simulator. It's a very popular procedure. Um, it's also part of that cash test. Uh, next, we have the wet sieve procedure. And then we have slakes. It's a smartphone app. It's a fairly new technique. And then finally, we have the soil stability index. And I'm gonna briefly go through each of these methods uh, to describe the mechanics of how these procedures are performed so we can compare them um, and show how that's going to affect those aggregate stability values. So first, let's look at the Cornell rainfall simulator method. This starts off with about 20 grams of air-dried aggregates, which are placed on top of a sieve. And then those aggregates succumb to a rainfall event for about five minutes, and these unstable aggregates are washed into this filter paper below. And what's remaining on top of that sieve are stable aggregates and sand, which are separated out and this output unit that you get for this method is percent water stable aggregates. Next, we have the wet sieve procedure. It's a little different in that it starts out with about four grams of air dried aggregates. And they're also placed on a sieve and they're, then they're placed inside this water container. That sieve is then oscillated and the unstable aggregates flow out of that sieve. Then what's remaining on top is placed in another container that has this dispersing solution in it. It's again oscillated to separate those sand particles from those stable aggregates. And just like the Cornell method, we get this output unit of percent water stable aggregates. Next is the Slakes. It's a smartphone app. It's a free app you can get on your Android or iPhone de devices. And you usually start out with about eight grams of air dried aggregates. And this is actually usually measured by the number of PEDs that you use. So for our studies, we used three pea size aggregates. And this is what your setup will look like. You'll need a white sheet of paper, a Petri dish, or I found that also a at the bottom of a clear plastic cup also works. You'll need something to set your smartphone on, a smartphone with the app, You'll also need some type of white light source, and I recommend a phone charger, because this app will wear down your battery. So your setup will look something like this. 
you'll place the white piece of paper down and the empty Petri dish with three of those aggregates on top. Then you'll suspend your iPhone above and you'll go through the steps that the app takes you through. So first you're gonna click this button and get this reference image. Then you're gonna transfer those aggregates into another Petri dish that contains water. And then you're gonna click this start button. And for about 10 minutes, this app will measure the amount of dispersion that happens with those aggregates. Um, and after it's done, you'll get this number. So the current version of the Slakes apps will get you this slaking index for the output unit. And this is kind of counterintuitive to what we usually talk about with aggregate stability. So this slaking index is actually negatively correlated or associated with aggregate stability, meaning the lower this number, the greater your stability. So instead, to be able to compare across methods, we use this output unit of stability at 10 minutes. And this is basically calculated using this initial reference image, that area divided by the final 10 minute dispersion area. And that's on a scale from zero to one. And then finally, we have the soil stability index. This uses about 19 grams of air dried aggregates. And they're placed on this stack of sieves that contain different mesh sieve sizes. So as you go down this, this stack right here, you're actually decreasing that mesh sieve size. So first, these air dried aggregates are placed on top of the sieve system and they're shaken. And as you can see, those aggregates are divided out into their different size fractions. And this will actually give you your dry soil stability index. And those aggregates are collected and placed on a stack of another couple sieves and then placed in water. It's oscillated. And what comes out of those sieves is then placed on another set of sieves where it's rinsed out. And then what remains on top, those are the different size fractions for the wet soil stability index. So for this method, we get the output unit of mean weight diameter. So let's take a step back and look at the big differences among these methods. So the first big difference is that external force. We have two of these methods that use a wet sieving procedure. One method that looks at rainfall or raindrop impacts, and another method that looks at water dispersion using image recognition. And this gives us differing output units. So for the Cornell and the wet sieve method, we're getting that percent water stable aggregate. For slakes, we're getting that 10 minute stability and the soil stability index, we're getting that mean weight diameter. And although these have different outputs and different ranges, all of these are positively associated with aggregate stability, meaning the higher the output number, the greater your aggregate stability. And finally, we wanna look at cost. Like we saw earlier, economics is a very deciding factor when it comes to implementing these procedures. So we wanna factor in how much these cost. And we see for most of these methods, the average cost is about $20 per sample. For Slakes, the app itself is free, but we calculated about $2 per sample based on your time and some of those little tools that you'll need. So why did we do this study? Well, for one, we, looked, we wanted to look at these methods, compare them and ask ourselves, are they sensitive to soil properties? And secondly, are any of these methods sensitive to changes in management, which is an indicator of a good soil health measurement? And based on what we've learned, if we're looking at creating this universal soil health analysis system, which method should we recommend? So first, let's look at the distributions of each of these methods. So on the y-axis, we have our aggregate stability in their respective units. And here we have the distributions in block, box plots for each of the different cropping systems. So this light tan color is row crop systems. This light green is integrated row crop and perennial. This dark green is perennial. And this dark brown is woody perennial. And if you'll notice, this horizontal red line that goes across the graph that represents the overall average aggregate stability value for each of those methods. So now let's look at how all of these compare with their distributions. So up here we have our Cornell method, 
our wet sieve on the top right, slakes on the bottom left, and the wet soil stability index on the bottom right. And if you look at the colored boxes, one of the things that you notice is that there's an increasing trend of aggregate stability. When we move from the row crop systems to some of our integrated and our perennial systems. And that's consistent across all of these methods. The next thing you'll notice is that, that these methods differ greatly on where that red line is placed. So it's really evident when we look, we compare the Cornell method and the wet sieve procedure. You see these are on the same scale, but we see that the average aggregate stability rating for the Cornell method is about 25% whereas that average for the wet sieve procedure is about 56%. And what that's telling us is that these output units or these values don't translate well among our methods. And that's important when we're looking at this universal system. Next, we wanted to look at some of those soil properties and how they might influence our aggregate stability. So here on the x-axis, we're looking at soil organic carbon on the y-axis, we're looking at our aggregate stability um, measurement. And from what we can see here on these scatter plot graphs is that there's a slight trend of increasing aggregate stability with increasing soil organic carbon for most of our methods. However, there's, these are very weak associated trends. Uh, when I looked at the R-squares, Cornell actually had the st strongest trend uh, or association with soil organic carbon and slakes had the weakest association. So based on this raw data, there's only slight influence of soil organic carbon on our aggregate stability. Now let's go into our second objective and look at our sensitivity to management practices. So like some of my colleagues showed earlier, this is a response ratio graph, where on the x-axis we have our percent change in aggregate stability due to these changes in management. So here we have tillage intensity. This is the overall effect. So it's basically an average of all of these uh, subcategories combined. So here we have a transition from intense to moderate, moderate to minimum, and intense to minimum. And then again, you'll note this zero line. So if these box, if this whisker or line crosses that zero line, it's not significantly different. So there was no significant change in aggregate stability due to that change in management. So let's take a look back at all of our methods and compare them. And the one thing you'll notice is that all these methods are pretty consistent in their sensitivity to tillage, meaning that overall, all of these methods were, were sensitive to changes in tillage. And all of them showed an increase in aggregate stability when you decrease the tillage intensity. Now let's look at some of the other changes in management. Like I just stated, all of the methods were sensitive to changes in tillage, in tillage intensity. Um, wet sieve, the wet soil, still, wet soil stability index was the most sensitive. So you had about a 17% increase in aggregate stability by reducing your tillage. Then we looked at implementing cover crops and only the Cornell method and the Slakes method were sensitive to implementing those cover crops. If we removed crop residue, so that's either taking it off the field or burning it, we saw that, the, again, only the Cornell method and the Slakes method responded significantly. So we had a 21% decrease in aggregate stability with the Cornell method and an 11% decrease with the Slakes. And then when we looked at applying an organic amendment, so this was something like a manure or poultry litter type application, we saw something different. So only the wet sieve procedure and the wet soil stability index showed a significant increase in aggregate stability due to that management. So based on all this, what have we learned um, and that we can apply to our uh, results? So the first thing that we learned is based on this data, there was minimal sensitivity to soil organic carbon and there was a lot more variability than we expected. And then in regards to sensitivity to changes in management, all of the methods responded significantly to reduce tillage intensity. However, on overall, Cornell and the Slakes method were the most sensitive consistently across. 
So based on what we've learned, we want to keep these things in factors when we're trying to recommend one of these methods. So the first thing we want to ask is which one is sensitive to management? Well, the Cornell and the Slakes methods were very sensitive to management. But if we want something that we can recommend universally, that's relatively cheap and we can get rapid results, then we would recommend the Slakes app. It's something that everybody can use. Uh, you take it out and you get results within 24 hours of taking your samples. Um, and it's something that everyone can do. So with that, I'd like to thank all of our partnering scientists. It was really great getting out there and meeting everyone. And we really appreciate all their hard work and dealing with us crazy scientists. And we're also very uh, thankful for all the support of our funders.